Good morning, folks. Here we are, rattling along at four miles an hour, busting up stubbles. It's a beautiful spring morning. Uh, trees are just beginning to get a bit of tinge of green on them. And we're out cultivating. We got the, uh, the heavy duty 32 foot cultivator on the back. Ripping into these stubbles as early as I can. This field is just dry enough. This is the field where we had the discing marathon. This is the field how we burnt all the uh, quack grass or cooch in. And this is the field that I combined in November. So, yeah. So, we're trying to do a little bit better this year. What I'm doing is I'm ripping up the uh, the stubbles. I wanted to do it in the fall, but by the time I'd finished combining, the uh, the soil was frozen and I couldn't get an implement in the ground. But anyway, the sole purpose of today's little exercise is to rip up this quack grass and try and deplete its reserves. You need to do this on a, a nice, dry, hot day, which which it is today. No point in doing it when it's wet. So yeah, so it's mid-morning, the sun is shining, I'm the only one in the neighborhood who's working the fields, they're all probably thinking, what, what's that idiot doing today, but anyway, I've got my uh, trusty tractor dog Sally with me, she's keeping an eye on things, making sure I don't get molested by rabbits or deer or anything like that, and uh, you may have noticed the the, uh, the hood is a little strange. There's no loader out on the front of this blue tractor. Well, I wonder why that is. So, uh, so why don't we take a look? Let's lift the machine out. So yeah, we've got a new set of wheels. I'm afraid we had to say goodbye to the poor old John Deere. She was getting a bit long in the tooth and a bit leaky. So we can't afford unreliability. We had enough problems with it last spring. Yeah, bloody thing set us back nearly two weeks waiting for parts. So traded the old bugger in and we got this monster. Let's have a look at it. Oh, it's out. Let's go. Oh. <clears throat> well there she is. She's a New Holland. As you probably guessed by the colour of the bonnet. Uh, T7 230 so it's 180 horsepower and it boosts itself to 230 horsepower under certain circumstances quite a monster it's quite big um, it's got enough power for this cultivator which the John Deere never had uh, we took delivery of it about 10 days ago and uh, we ordered a loader with it, the loader didn't come and we haven't got the dual wheels on the back yet uh, they haven't come either, but anyways on this hard ground, this hard stubble, it's, it's not too bad but I know that when we get onto the looser stuff it's going to be hopping and skipping a bit we need uh, that extra grip on the back uh, I had to make up a temporary weight frame on the front my trusty Minneapolis Moline wheel weights have come into use again the best $40 I ever spent at an auction was buying those things they've been extremely useful in the, la in the last few years as tractor weight they're not very elegant but they do the job but yeah there she is Not a bad machine. 
Now we looked at uh, several types. Massey Ferguson, John Deere, Case, New Holland. Well, Case and New Holland are pretty much the same tractor anyway, just different colour paint and a few things different in the cab. Uh, John Deere didn't want to deal with us. Her rep couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered to give us a price. Couldn't be bothered to come out and look at our trades. Uh, so obviously John Deere is not interested in selling tractors. Uh, I like the look of the Massey. I would have happily had a Massey. Um, in some ways I would have preferred them, but uh, they couldn't quite compete on price with the New Holland. And the dealer for New Holland is in town, is about an hour away, where the Massey is at least three hours away. So, uh, yeah, it's a close thing, but we went with the New Holland. The other tractor we've had has been 100% reliable. So, uh, no qualms there. Let's have a look inside. Well, we got the uh, fuel tank here. I think it's 100 US gallons, not really sure. 80 real gallons, and then we got the, uh, the urea death fluid for the, uh, for the catalyst. The cab is pretty much the same as the T6160, uh, I think they call it the Horizon cab. Let me turn that off now. I think they call that the Horizon cab. Tilting steering wheel, it's got the same, uh, same dashboard. It's got the uh, little debris firkins up here. Hydraulic flow control uh, area acreage uh, estimator, covered acreage, uh, trailer brakes which we don't have, voltage, um, oh, book thing, I can't remember, oil pressure, uh, kilometers traveled, engine hours, uh, this is the menu set up, PTO speed, um, implement height on your three point linkage and wheel slip, I don't bother using all of those. Uh, do, 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 do. The different controls you got over here are it's a power shift gearbox, so there's no ranges, it's just one through to 18 gears. Change up with this, change down with this, and then it reads out whatever gear you're in over here. Uh, this is a, a quick up and down for your three point linkage, and this is your um, headland turn sequencer so if you can set it up so that it lifts the arms and turns off the PTO and lowers the arms and turns the PTO back on again. If you've got that kind of equipment on there I generally don't bother with it because I like to control everything. Um, four remotes or four spool valves uh, operated by cable, mechanical, I like mechanical, don't really like um, <sighs> the uh, solenoid electric operated ones I know on these tractors they give trouble I've heard of lots of uh, lots of trouble and even the dealer doesn't like selling them because of that PTO pretty standard um, 540 and a thousand by changing the shaft in the back PTO brake wish we'd had a economy PTO because this tractor is going to be on the mower in the summer and uh, it would be nice to operate at lower engine RPM don't need a lot of power for the mower, not not with this brute anyway. Uh, over here we got a little electric joystick. The loader, when it's fitted, will be uh, operated electrically by this little gadget. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, Three-point linkage is like the little tractor, same thing. This is your position control, this is your draft control, and this is your... Uh, quick up and down which replicates what this little switch here does. Uh, the throttle is, is down here. I really do not like this. This is a bit stupid having it down here. You can't reach it. And if you've got a hook on your belt on, on your on your trousers it will get caught in here and move the throttle. That's kind of stupid but anyway it is what it is. And underneath here we've got the sensitivity controls for three-point linkage. We've got the 
uh, linkage travel, how high it goes, you've got the speed which it moves and um, uh, the drop speed I mean and we've got the, uh, the sensitivity you know fast uh, reaction or slow reaction to the draft control uh, electrical outlets over here uh, switches here these are your LED lights you've got little eyebrow lights on it like cars have Wow, every tractor needs those. Yeah, right. We can turn off the three point linkage here, battery isolator. Tractor lights up here, these are your working lights. Uh, this switch, I have no idea what it does, it's not in the manual. You know, I play with it all the time, but nothing seems to happen. Heater and air conditioner here, cubby holes, which are great for launching things out every time you go over a bump. Radio, it's my own radio. The tractor came fitted with a radio, but I had to take it out because it wasn't uh, suitable for satellite radio. And if you don't have satellite radio up here, you uh, you will go insane because you otherwise you'll have to listen to the local radio or CBC. And CBC is enough to bore the arse off a donkey. Uh, there's another um, outlet there. Uh, for running uh, any uh, monitors that you might have. This is a bar that you mount the monitors on. There's nothing on here at the moment. So this is the basic cab. This is what I wanted. Didn't want any gizmos. Um, over here we've just got another couple of power outlets. That's it. We've got the seat. Uh, they call it the instructor's seat, but we all know it's the grandkids' seat. Where the grandkids ride when they want to come for a ride. Um, that's pretty much it. The driver's seat is, you know, is quite a nice seat. It's an air ride seat. You adjust it to suit yourself, and then tilting and extending uh, steering column. We've got sunroof up in the roof. Obviously, <laughs> it's a better sunroof than the little tractor because this one you can actually open it and let a bit of fresh air in. Um, with these big doors, you there's no little windows that you can open to let a bit of fresh air in on a day when it's not dusty. So, um, I don't really like these big doors, but that's what it comes with. Um, so yeah, 30 inch tyres on the front, 42s on the back. We've got uh, calcium chloride and water ballast in the back to give the tractor a bit of weight. So it'll pull that air. That's all I can say about it. Not a bad machine, and uh, everything's good so far. Let's hope it stays that way, and it's good and reliable, and we get uh, this year's seeding done without a hitch. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Behave yourselves, look after one another, and don't do anything I wouldn't enjoy. See you soon.